These failures represent a fundamental and foundational structural problem of an economy designed on a colonial and apartheid logical template. And the Honorable Van Royen was in the position of Minister of Finance very short, so he does not have the experience thereof, but he should remember, maybe he read a brief of two, but the fiscal position Honorable when vessels. he was the weekend special Thank you, wasn't. Honorable Vessels, so please join. Our people are now aware that despite their country being one of the richest in, endowed with a plethora of mineral resources, neoliberal policies like fiscal consolidation have caused our country to be the most unequal society in the world. And whilst the Honourable Van Royen says inflation must be cut, he wants to also cut interest rates. He does not understand the simple fiscal and economic principles. Is the member addressing Honourable Van Royen or the Minister? The Honourable Member proves my point, because just as the economic policies of this side, that question or whatever it was, proves that there's no logic. We can't use the apartheid creator this team to resolve problem caused by it. We can't have constant interruptions which does not comply with the rules. Speaker, yes. the speaker there, the descendant of Van Beek, he knows that he can... I will now recognize Honorable Van Royen. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson of the session. Chairperson, MK Pat is grateful for the opportunity accorded to make a submission to this debate. The MK Party considers the current macroeconomic and fiscal policy framework in South Africa from a clear and unambiguous decolonial perspective, foregrounding both the failures and potential successes within an understanding of the colonial power metrics and its impact on South Africans. The current developmental failures that have accrued over the last 30 years are not simply a product of fiscal and macroeconomic policy inefficiencies and gaps, nor mere technical challenges in the execution and implementation of an otherwise politically neutral development agenda. These failures represent a fundamental and foundational structural problem of an economy designed on a colonial an apartheid logical template and consequently incapable of resolving the developmental problems facing many people in South Africa today. These development problems emanate from a fundamentally loopsided and skewed development paradigm whose very arch architectural uh, uh, aspects is embedded in a colonial power matrix. As an institution guided by the principles of participatory democracy, it is crucial for this House to know that most of the stakeholders, as correctly alluded to by the committee chairperson, uh, indicated to the hearings that this revised and proposed fiscal framework in Ta'alia brought the following committee to uh, uh, its attention. Austerity measures, which have been implemented for the past 30 years, in the form of fiscal consolidation have adversely affected all prospects of bolstering employment, reduction of inequality, and eradication of poverty. They are now aware that fiscal consolidation has dismally failed to create jobs, leading to one of the highest unemployment rates in the world. As we speak, Honorable Chairperson, eight million South Africans are unemployed, including unemployed graduates. Our people are now aware that despite their country being one of the richest in, endowed with a plethora of mineral resources, neoliberal policies like fiscal consolidation have caused our country to be the most unequal society in the world, with Gini index standing at 0 0.67. The masses of our people are now enlightened on the role of fiscal consolidation 
as the primary cause of their power, poverty, which is one of the very highest in the world. This is despite, Honorable Chairperson, our country paying tapped, the country of plenty by multinational companies who continue to mine mineral resources and take them raw to their countries for processing and value adding at the expense of local beneficiation and economic growth. Uh, our people's call is loud and clear, a uh, chairperson. Neoliberal and austerity policies must fall. As MKP party, we are in full agreement with the masses of our people. Hence, in the people's mandate, we are unambiguous on our call to do away with neoliberal fiscal and monetary policies. MK Party is extremely concerned that when celebrating 100 days of existence, the DA-led coalition failed to tell South Africans and the world that in their 100 days of existence, they have failed to table a plan to Parliament on how they intend using the country's finances. According to the chronology of this country's budget process, this is an important stage meant to enhance accountability and MPs' oversight work. Honorable Chairperson, it's crucial for this August House to note that as we debate this matter, no medium-term development plan was tabled in this parliament. This is a clear indication of a government that undermines parliament rules and procedures. The absence of this plan denies us as MPs an opportunity to know what informed priorities and targets of this revised and proposed fiscal framework, making it more impossible to hold the executive accountable to their undertaking. This House must take a firm position on this matter and condemn the DA-led coalition government for disrespect and not taking Parliament serious. <laughs> Disappointingly and unsurprisingly, the DA-led coalition seeks to cut the military, uh, uh, military veterans benefits by 63 million. This is after underspending in Kiet during the previous financial years. All this happened despite military veterans. Kids, school fees were not paid and their dependents not having access to healthcare services. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, taking our guidance from the, the people's mandate, we support the, the committee recommendation calling on the Reserve Bank to consider rate adjustment with broader growth objectives, balancing inflation control with growth supports. This is a step in the right direction for full realization of MK party call for broadening the mandate of the Reserve Bank beyond inflation targeting and its ultimately nationalization of the Reserve Bank. Consideration of world tax and more tax on multinational companies will also go a long way, Honorable Chairperson, in reducing tax burden on the poor. And we must emphasize, Chairperson, that in the absence of a clear plan on which uh, these uh, priorities and targets cited in this fiscal framework hinges, in the absence of the, MD, uh, the, the medium term development plan, it is clear that National Treasury of the DA-led coalition government is using the old order development framework approved by its apartheid created monopoly businesses to sustain their rent-seeking trades by maximizing their profits at the expense of the country's development agenda. We can use the apartheid created, uh, uh, created system to resolve problems caused by it. We need to rock the boat and temper with the structure of the economy in a more radical way. Because of this lackluster and baseless revised proposed phrase, uh, fiscal framework, we can confirm the authenticity of tax revenue collection, tax service cost, unemployment reduction, poverty reduction, and inequality reduction targets cited in this revised and proposed fiscal framework. SMK Party is not in support of this uninspiring proposed fiscal framework. It is too narrow, it is too shallow to address the triple challenges of unemployment, poverty, and inequality bedeviling our country. 
That's hence we are saying, SMK party, we are not going to support this framework because it's not going to take our country anywhere. Thank you. Speaker is the Honorable Vessels. Honorable House Chairperson, the committee is quite correct that we have a government debt crisis. But a government debt crisis is caused by a budget deficit, which means that we are spending more money than we are getting in, in other words, than our tax revenue. On the one hand, spending cuts are undesirable, as the need for spending on infrastructure, basic service delivery, education, health care, and so forth are ever increasing. On the other hand, increasing revenue entails either increasing the tax rate, in other words, taxing the already overburdened taxpayer even more, or increasing the number of taxpayers by stimulating economic growth and thus creating jobs, which will, at the end, create more tax revenue. It's very easy to say that get government debt under control, stimulate economic growth, cut interest rates, cut inflation, all of this whilst having no austerity measures or any spending cuts. At a stage, Honourable Chairperson, during this debate, I was uncertain what made the most noise, the southeaster wind in the tent or the rhetoric by the Honourable Van Royen. Because let's listen to what this side of the House says. They say, spend money, don't have any spending cuts, but also don't have any private sector. Thus, don't have any taxpayers. Where do you expect the tax money to come from? Where do you expect the money that needs to be spent to come from? We must start being responsible. We need responsible policies. Rhetoric of calling it monopoly and get calling the money, it... Get the money from taxing the mines. What's happening? I don't know what um, there's a... Honourable vessels, just take your seat for a moment. Was, is the, it, was there a hand? No. Honourable Skosana. Uh, thank you, Chair. Is the member addressing Honourable Van Royen or the Minister? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you must first inquire whether the member is prepared to answer a question so that it's not an, uh, an inter intervention in terms of the rules. Honourable vessels, please... Continue. Thank you, Honourable Chairperson. The Honourable Member proves my point, because just as the economic policies of this side, that question or whatever it was proves that there's no logic. Honourable Vessels, Honourable Chairperson. my apologies. Honourable Skosana. Can the Member take the question? Honourable Vessels, are you prepared to take a question? No, I'm not. Thank you. Because the question Please is proceed. not going to mean anything. What we need is responsible policies, not rhetoric about monopoly capital, about all kinds of words that serve no purpose. Calling basic economic principles Honourable new Vessels. liberal will serve Honourable no Vessels, purpose. Honourable Vessels, please take your seat. Honourable Member, why do you want to be recognised? Uh, I wanted to check, Chair. Uh, has Honourable Vessels heard of... No, uh, Honourable Member, sector. I've already indicated. In terms of the rules, first inquire whether he's prepared to take a question. Honourable Members, to my left, don't embark on this. On this. Um, if you persist in trying to interrupt the Speaker through, through um, unprocedural interventions, uh, it ca cannot be accepted. I've made my ruling on this. Honourable Manye, why do you want to be recognised? Uh, Chairperson, you know the rules yourself. You can't refer to us as a group. If you've got certain people that you want to deal with, deal with them, okay. but don't group us. I, 
Yes, thank you, Honorable Mani. All, all I'm advising is that we can't have constant interruptions which does not comply with the rules. So I'm also pleading with you as the chief whip of the party to assist us in this regard. Honorable Vessels, please continue. Thank you, House Chairperson. Calling basic, well-known economic principles that work and that are logical, new liberal, won't change anything. At the end of the day, you need income, so that you can spend on infrastructure, so that you can improve economic growth. We need private, the private sector to get the economy going so that jobs are created. Without the private sector, we won't have any job creation. The public wage bill is already bloated. And the Honorable Van Royen was in the position of Minister of Finance very short, so he does not have the experience thereof, but he should remember, maybe he read a brief of two, but the fiscal position Honourable when Vessels, he was the weekend special Thank you, Honourable Vessels. So Please just good. take your seat for a moment. Honourable Reddy, why do you want to be recognised? Point of order, Speaker. Yes. The Speaker there, the descendant of Van de he knows that he, can, he needs to bring a, a motion if he wants to cast aspersions negatively on no. a member in this House. Thank you, Honourable that's Reddy. Exactly what he just did. Thank you, Honourable Reddy. That, that point of order can't be sustained. There be was no, no aspersions cast. Honourable Vessels, please continue. Thank you, House Chairperson. Let me conclude. Chairperson, we need responsible policies. This fiscal framework is an attempt to get us out of a crisis, a crisis that we have to admit. We are in an economic crisis. People are suffering. There is unemployment. But for the first time, we have better inflation. And whilst the Honourable Van Royen says inflation must be cut, he wants to also cut interest rates. He does not understand the simple fiscal and economic principles. Lea Blikke maak die meeste geraas, kom ons sit skouwer aan die wiel en kry hierdie skip weer op die see gedrijf. Baie Thank dankie. you. Your time has now expired. The next speaker is the Honourable Beasley.